Adventures in Illinois Higher Education. Why are most millennials socialists? Originally published at libertyunderattack.com on April 30th, 2016, and read to you by the author. Socialism has scammed the oppressed peoples of the world into believing that socialism offers them relief in a future utopia upon this earth. And it is a lie. Bill Cooper, The Truth About Socialism, March 21st, 1996. Bill Cooper was certainly correct, but he was a constitutionalist. In the 1,000 plus hours I listened to his radio show, I never heard him mention the socializing of the war debt. Whether that was due to his ignorance of the subject or a deliberate exclusion, I will never know. My path to liberty began as an unknowing adherent to socialism. No, not in the Bernie Sanders sense of the term, but it did. I started as a constitutionalist. Though, once I began to understand the founding of this country and the dangers of the state, I dropped anarchism completely. The main reason that the 1787 federal constitution was brought to fruition was due to the lack of taxing powers provided in the Articles of Confederation. In short, the Federalists chose to socialize the war debt rather than utilizing the free market. That said, socialism, even communism, has existed in this country in a, for a long time. The most important year being 1913 when the Federal Reserve Act was passed. The only difference now is the open advocacy for socialism, much like recent history in countries like Greece and Venezuela. Being a college student, I've been unlucky enough to witness this new phenomenon firsthand. Whether it be the Bernie Sanders bumper stickers on the majority of cars I see on campus, the people screaming Bernie Sanders out in the quad, where all of the students walk through to class, etc., socialism is the goal of the mindless and millennials, and even some in academia. That being the case, the question to ask is this. Why are most millennials socialists? My a priori and a posteriori conclusions will make up the rest of this article. 1. Economic Illiteracy Murray Rothbard once said, quote, It is no crime to be ignorant of economics, which is, after all, a specialized discipline and one that most people consider to be a dismal science. But it is totally irresponsible to have a loud and vociferous opinion on economic subjects while remaining in this state of ignorance. End quote. This seems like the most prevalent answer to me, albeit it is twofold. First off, any socialist is collectivistic, and that is what the college experience breeds. That and the disdain for individualism. People want to fit in, party, and get laid. I didn't include get educated on that list because they really aren't getting an education. The collectivistic part is bad enough, but once you toss in a socialist demagogue, things escalate quite rapidly. In addition to that, there's also the promise of free stuff. Obviously, there is no such thing as a free lunch, and to believe that your education will be free is patently absurd, but again, that comes with a lack of even a basic understanding of economics. Whether it is a product or a service, there is always time, money, and or effort exerted. Though time is in fact money, considering the limited time human beings spend on this earth, and there is also the issue of opportunity costs. Even if you aren't explicitly paying for the service, in this case college, someone else is, and there isn't much of a difference between you and those parasites that leech off of the welfare state. As Henry Hazlitt explicated many times in his Economics in One Lesson, the money that is used for X industry is money that cannot be utilized in Y industry, even if Y industry will produce more. In short, those tax dollars allocated towards higher level indoctrination are creating a much higher supply, and as a result, the demand decreases and competition for jobs increase, ceteris paribus. Hence, the unemployment and underemployment rate for recent college graduates. You can ignore economics throughout college, but once you enter, enter, enter into the workforce, you're going to learn firsthand the law of supply and demand. And unless you're in a growing field, you're probably not going to have a happy result. In summation, it comes down to the collectivistic college atmosphere and the lack of understanding of even basic economics. 2. History One of the problems a lot of college students have is a complete misunderstanding or lack of a knowledge of history. Predominantly, that is due to public schooling. As George Santayana said, those who do not learn history are doomed to repeat it. Similarly, as expressed in Ecclesiastes 1.9, there is nothing new under the sun. That said, it doesn't even take an extensive study of history to understand the dangers of socialism. Even a look at mainstream media in the past year should represent that, Greece and Venezuela. Additionally, the democide statistics for the 20th century are quite revealing. Over 262 million citizens were murdered by their own government, excluding war casualties. It is worth noting that four out of the five Deca mega murderers happened under socialist and communist regimes. Also note, even expanding beyond that label, not a single one of those regimes gave a damn about either property rights or the free market. Contrary to what is being pushed in your government schools, capitalism and, free, and the free market are not your enemies. 
Your enemy is the state, and all of history exemplifies that fact. 3. Cultural Marxism, otherwise known as political correctness. In the spirit of the trivium method, it is important to define our terms. The definitions of cultural Marxism, CM, political correctness, PC, and social justice warrior, SJW, are essentially synonymous and will be used as such. In essence, it, quote, places great emphasis on analyzing, controlling, and changing the popular culture, the popular discourse, the mass media, and the language itself. Cultural Marxists themselves try to move these inequalities by more or less subtle manipulation and censorship of culture, end quote. This is one concept that is unique to the millennials growing up in this geographical, geographical location known as America. That's quite obvious considering the fact that the SJW, SJW movement has essentially grown out of college campuses. Though, PC and censorship are not the only things that come with it. With CM also comes the Marxist ideology, which is completely detached from reality, which will be discussed in a moment. Ludwig von Mises and his magnum opus, Human Action, describe this quite succinctly. Quote, Only one way could lead the socialists out of this impasse. They could attack logic and reason and substitute mystical intuition for radiocination. It was the historical role of Karl Marx to propose this solution. Based on Hegel's dialectical mysticism, he blithely irrigated to himself the ability to predict the future. End quote. Note, Mises is describing the destruction of communist ideas by classical economists. This irrationality is not only propagated by mindless millennials, and it's not segregated from topics such as economics. In one particularly atrocious example last semester, my sociologist justice warrior teacher openly advocated for communism and praised Karl Marx. Granted, her understanding of it was nil as she provided an elementary definition of it to college students, and not much else. In one less egregious example, Professor Statist, my American government politics professor last semester, claimed that the perfect economic system is one that is the ideal blend of communism and capitalism, which is completely fallacious. He must not have read human action, and I quote, The market economy, or capitalist, as it is usually called, and the socialist economy preclude one another. There is no mixture of the two systems possible or thinkable. There is no such thing as a mixed economy, a system that would be in part capitalistic and in part socialist. Production is directed either by the market or by the decrees of a production czar or a community of production czars. End quote. Page 259. To sum up, CM has a major impact on the creation of socialists within a higher level indoctrination for the following reasons. The complete detachment from reality, the open advocacy by academia, and a minimal understanding of economics. I highly doubt these mindless millennials study economics in their safe spaces. Number four, amorality, without morals. Kamala and A has done a fantastic job in his spreading anarchy series and providing empirical evidence that most millennials claim to already live the axioms of non-aggression and self-ownership, albeit generally not in a consistent manner. In their interpersonal relationships, they claim to exude libertarian principles and oftentimes do, but on the other hand, they advocate for political rulers and the violation of person and property by way of the voting booth. Something I've often been told is, But Shane, life isn't black and white, there's shades of gray. In some cases, this might be possible, but when it gets down to, gets down to ethics, I don't think any such claim can be made sincerely. This doesn't necessarily only pertain to millennials, but I think a case could be made for widespread moral relativism within college campuses, which, simply put, is an ethical standpoint which deems that morals are subjective and relative. So, therefore, virtue can never truly be known universally, except, of course, when the state outlaws vices according to its sycophants because we must unquestioningly, unquestioningly obey the authorities, for only they constitute the priest class of society. For my ethics class, we're required to read Whatever Happened to Good and Evil by Russ Schaefer Landau, who is an ethical objectivist. In this book, he made a fantastic point, which further verifies my claim. Quote, Ask any ethics professor nowadays, and you're bound to get the same report. Most students regard moral skepticism as the default position in ethics, and abandon their view, if not at all, only very begrudgingly. End quote. Page 21. Note. Moral skepticism is just the term the author uses to define all of the ethical standpoints that reject ethical objectivism, which includes moral relativism. That's quite the admittance coming straight from the director of the Parr Center for Ethics at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. This may also explain why college-age students are the most apathetic publics, which leads to inaction in most circumstances. One of my professors this semester made an accurate statement along the lines of, that's why event organizers always offer free pizza at events. You need to be motivated to come. 
To summate this section, I posit that moral relativism is widespread across college campuses and is one of the factors driving them to the socialist camp. Without a consistent philosophical ethical grounding, rational self-interest turns into the indirect use of violence upon others through the collectivistic policies advocated. Number five, emotion over logic. As was alluded to in section three, there is an obvious detachment from reality in the minds of the socialistic millennials. I propose that this is caused by the conscious or subconscious preference of emotion over logic, or since their brain of socialism is a subset of Marxism, they may honestly believe that there's no such thing as a universally valid logic. In fascist book debates, this first proposition can be easily evidenced in the form of logical fallacies and the emotional outbursts often accompanying these sorts of discussions. There are three that are extremely common. One, straw man, misrepresenting the position of the opponents. Example. You're for the free market, therefore you must be a Trump supporter. 2. Ad hominem. Personal attacks against the, oppo uh, against the opponent. Example. You're just an idiot selfish capitalist. Number 3. Red herring. Changing the subject of the argument rather than debating. Uh, for example, a smokescreen. Example. Libertarian anarchist. Private and voluntarily paid for roads would be more efficient and more ethical. Socialist. But we need taxes to provide for the poor, the single unwed mothers, and the elderly, not to mention the vulnerable of society. In terms of the conscious emotional response, it could simply be due to the ignorance on the subject at hand or just simply good old-fashioned bias. For the unconscious response, I will leave that up to psychology, but I would posit the, that the two aforementioned reasons could be at play here too. The statement, there is no such thing as a universally valid logic, can be dispensed with quickly. Simply put, it was an intuitionistic, intuitionistic approach by Marx and Hegel that has no bearing on reality. Also, such a universal statement about there being no such thing as a universally valid, valid logic is a self-detonating statement, which, given its self-evidently contradictory nature, is dialogically stopped, and therefore should not be taken seriously by anyone. Summarily, socialistic millennials are completely detached from reality because of their preference for emotion over logic. Consider, too, how they unabashedly violate argumentation ethics while they rail against capitalism and private property. If mindless millennials don't value property rights as a matter of principle, why would you ever assume that they would respect the property rights of the poor themselves? Conclusion It's first worth mentioning a realization I came to recently. The trivium method has been turned on its head within higher-level indoctrination, if it, if it ever existed there at all. I've often stated that students are not getting educated in college, or even in public schools more generally, and I still assert that. Mine and many other self-driven education is done by way of the trivia method. Simply put, starting from axiomatic truths, grammar, building concepts and percepts that are verified in reality, logic, and then testing the practical application of such con concepts, rhetoric. It is a bottom-up, self-vetting approach. But that's not what's being done on college campuses. Rather, they are teaching and promoting concepts that have been shown not to not conform to reality. They are working top-down, rhetoric to grammar. This arises some problems. As pointed out by Bill Jocelyn, quote, We can take higher-order concepts and treat them as though they are percepts or axioms and build a case which has evidence and valid logic but yet be totally devoid of reality. A concept is an idea rooted in reality. Ideas can be applicable to observation, provide predictability, yet be completely disconnected in reality. Order is important, end quote. It's also worth mentioning argumentation ethics once again. As Kyle Reardon pointed out, it is a logical proof that demonstrates that performative contradictions with any, any political ideology except for libertarian anarchism. The simple act of advocating for violations of self-ownership is contradictory, what should, if they are illogical, cause them to abandon such an ideology that does not conform to reality. This decry for socialism is heavily influenced by attendance at higher level institutions, and I believe it will continue for as long as people continue to believe in such archaic ideas. One thing that espousers of liberty can do is inform people on the importance of self-education, as well as mentorship, which was done more commonly during the early American colonial period. Some of the, some of the most influential innovators and entrepreneurs never got a college degree, and with the endless possibilities made available, available by the internet, I think more of that will be seen in the future. Consider one more quote from Mises' Human Action. Many who are self-taught far excel the doctors, masters, and bachelors of the most renowned universities. 
You just heard Adventures in Illinois Higher Education. Why are most millennials socialists? Originally published at LibertyUnderAttack.com on April 30th, 2016, and read to you by the author. If you enjoyed this spoken discourse and the article, and appreciate the time and effort put into it, please consider donating to Liberty Under Attack. Just go to paypal.me forward slash LUA radio to make a quick donation, or visit the website for further options on the sidebar. Thanks in advance for your support.